Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Epcot. Recently, the Nine Dragons restaurant reopened in the China Pavilion, so I was able to get myself some reservations and decided to come out and check it out. But also, I know some of the food and wine booths opened up and I wasn't able to check them out when my family was here. So I thought maybe I would take a gander at a couple of those and maybe ride some rides and just enjoy an evening at Epcot. Any who's, let's go do this. I have been hearing all week that the attraction wait times have been super low. So I thought I'd come over and test that theory out on Test Track, but it looks like it's down at the moment. So maybe we'll head on into World Showcase and see what the wait time for Frozen Ever After is. My reservation time for Nine Dragons isn't until seven. So we got a couple hours before that. And I figured, like I said, I'd ride some rides, check out the food boots. And I don't know, I'm kind of excited for Nine Dragons. I have never eaten here before. This will be my first time. Now, I have heard people say that it's not the best restaurant in Epcot's World Showcase, but I'm willing to try it just so I can find out. I mean, I love Chinese food, so you never know. Some of the newer boots that open are the Lobster Landing and the Mac and Cheese Eats. And because we're going to be having dinner at Nine Dragons, I don't want to get anything to eat. But I am interested in the drinks, maybe. For the Mac and Eats, it looks like they've got, obviously, a bunch of Mac and Cheese. But at the bottom there, they have an 81 Bay Brewing Company Lemon Hazy IPA right here from Tampa, Florida. So I think I might try that one. Here it is, and I decided to go with the six ounce. Now, I'm not a big IPA fan, but I mean, it is a little lemony, so I don't know how bitter it is. We're gonna give it a swig to find out, and uh, I don't know, maybe it'll be really delicious. Oh yeah, that is really good. It's not very, it's not bitter at all. It's probably got a very low IBU, but the lemon in here, it is like, it's very, it's very refreshing. I like this beer, cheers. Now that we've had a beer, I think it's time we actually make it into World Showcase. I do want to test out Frozen wait time just to see what it's like. I feel like that's the busiest ride at Epcot next to Test Track. So it'll give you a good understanding that if it is really the low crowds that everyone's talking about this week. The funny thing is, is whenever Test Track is down, you kind of know it's down from a far distance because you can't hear it actually going round and round. And I've been keeping an, like an ear out just in case it starts up, I'd run back there, but nothing yet. I can tell you the crowds in World Showcase are definitely not here. Usually this is a very congested area and there's wide open spaces. I wonder if anybody's out meeting uh, Anna or Elsa because Anna and Elsa are out here meeting and greeting, I believe too. Look at that, there's hardly nobody out here. What are the chances of that? When there's not a crowd around Anna and Elsa, that'll tell you something right there. And now I think we're just gonna cop right over to Frozen and see what that's like. Holy moly, 35 minutes. And it's actually queuing up right here. Oh, right here actually. That is so amazing, 35 minutes. Wow, it really is a slow week here in Disney. Said 35 minutes, more like 20 minutes. That is amazing. So of course, we're gonna ride Frozen. I feel like I just rode this with my mom and sister. Oh, is this Boat 21? Fancy.
pleasant surprise. 35 minute posted and then a 20 minute wait. Can't go wrong with that. And since we're over here, even though we are gonna be going to dinner soon, they do have a Princesses Week uh, cookie inside the Kringla Bakery. And I'm thinking we might uh, stop in and grab it since we're here, you know? Right here it is, the sister's cookie. Fancy, World Princess Week. It's only $3.79 too. It looks really, really good. It's a sugar cookie with chocolate ganache. $3.95 for a cookie. It's a little bit high and expensive, but for Disney it's not that bad of a deal because you figure all the other specialty desserts are like five, six dollars, and I just wanted to try it just to try it. I got myself a cup of water though because I feel like this is going to be one of those cookies where you could use like a cup of milk or something. It's going to be very dry. Here we go. I hope I don't get uh, sprinkles all over me. Oh! That was a little bit of a shocker because I thought it was going to be harder than it is but it is so soft. And it's very delicious. Are you live, babe? I really thought this was going to be a one or bite, like one or two bite cookie, but I could actually eat this all the way. Now, I probably shouldn't because, like I said, I do want to go eat uh, at Nine Dragons, so I don't want to spoil. And once they have a good dessert in there, so we'll take like another bite or two. But overall, I really did enjoy this. Uh, I really like this cookie, actually. Enough of the cookie business, though. Here we are, the China Pavilion. I cannot wait to try Nine Dragons. Now, I ran into like two or three people on my way over here who told me that it is not good. So I'm really, really curious. Is this going to be the worst Epcot restaurant? I have eaten at the uh, Lotus Blossom Cafe, which is a quick service location right next to Nine Dragons, and I didn't think it was that bad. I really did enjoy the food that I had there. So I don't know why people say Nine Dragons is so bad. I mean, we're here to find out anyway. Right there is Lotus Blossom, and then right here is Nine Dragons. We're gonna actually check out the menu and see if we can go in a couple minutes early. A little look at the menu. We've got crispy duck fried rice. Canton pepper beef, spicy honey crispy chicken, Kung Pao chicken and shrimp, salt and pepper shrimp with spinach noodles, colon spare ribs, vegetables and tofu stir fry. The menu is subject to change based on availability. It looks like we can go in a little bit early, so I think we'll do that now. Almost like 30 minutes early. It doesn't seem like it's a very popular or busy restaurant, but I'm hopefully uh, we'll have some good food and just enjoy the ambience. I have never been in here before. I think that's so interesting. It's a very pretty dining room though, and you can see everybody actually going about their business. And usually you'd be able to see the line for Frozen, but we just got off it and it was only a 35 minute wait. So there's no line actually all the way back here, but you can see the Good Fortunes gift shop out there. Now we're at our table. Let's take a look at the menu and kind of decide on what we're gonna get. Looks like they've got some pretty good appetizers. Crispy duck bao buns. I would be interested in trying those, I think. And then they've got crispy duck fried rice. All the uh, offerings that they had on the menu outside. But for appetizers, I didn't see the duck bao buns on there. So I think I'm definitely gonna get those and then maybe an entree. Each table actually has this nice little placemat where you can practice drawing your own Chinese characters. That's really awesome. I've never done anything like this before. I don't have a pen or else I would try. I would like to do the rain one and you can actually just practice right here. I don't think I've ever seen something like this at any of the Disney restaurants, like a little activity as you dine. So for the appetizer, I decided to go with the crispy duck bao buns. And then for the entree, I wanted to get the spicy honey crispy chicken. I have to keep looking because I forget what I'm gonna actually order. And they said that the spicy honey crispy chicken was kind of like a medium spice, not too much, not like the Kung Pao. So that's why I decided to try that one and it gets served with uh, white rice. So I'm excited. I've never had a duck bao bun before. And here they are. Look at this. They don't look really crispy though. It looks like it's kind of like a maybe grilled duck or something. I don't think it's fried. I don't know actually. Maybe it is, but we're gonna try it. I got the sauce on the side just in case I didn't like it. And it just comes like that. A little bit of green onions, a little duck, and a little sauce. 
First, we're gonna try it without the sauce. We've got a little tiny bao bun here. Very good. Oh yeah, nice and soft. And uh, I'm excited. I haven't eaten duck in a long time. I don't even know if I remember if I like it. I like it. It's really, really good. Now we're gonna try some of this sauce on there. I'm gonna open up the bun a little bit. Just drizzle it on. Pop, 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 pop. There we go. Slap it. <laughs> Excellent. There it is. So we're gonna try it now. Mm. Okay, I like it with the sauce on. So now we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it. The sauce is really, really good. Yeah, that's the way. Not too much though. I don't like things very saucy. Not too saucy. <laughs> and so far, I am highly impressed with this. Like just so we get that straight, appetizer already got me excited. Uh oh, I'm losing my duck. I almost lost my duck. I put too much sauce on it and the bun fell apart. But I have to say, before, I didn't remember if I liked duck or not, but I really like this duck. I do have to say, everything is actually fairly priced pretty well. I think the most expensive thing is the, the spare ribs, and that's $30. Everything else is like $20 to $25, and that's kind of cheap for a sit-down meal here at Epcot's World Showcase. I don't think anywhere else you can actually get a meal for $20. Um, yeah, maybe Mexico, they might have some chicken entrees there, but like, I don't know, I think that's actually not too bad of a deal, not too bad of a price. And here is my spicy honey crispy chicken, and this one's only $23, and it's a pretty big portion. I mean, actually, that is a very big portion. And they give me a nice scoop of rice and some broccoli. I'm excited to try this. This is going to be really good. The duck buns were $13, so I'm looking at probably around $36 for my whole meal. Not too shabby. One of the things I don't like about Chinese food uh, is that there's extra breading on it. Like I don't like a lot of breading on my chicken or like when I get General Sauls or anything like that. So we're going to see what the breading's like compared to chicken ratio. The breading to chicken ratio. Oh, not too shabby. That's actually not too, not too breaded. And we'll grab a little rice. That's the way. And then a little broccoli. There we go. Scoop seed potato. Put it on a chicken, and there we go. A perfect bite. Now he said not too spicy, like a medium spice. He said the Kung Pao was really spicy, so we'll find out. That is good, good chicken. Very crispy, very airy, not overly breaded. I really like this, and the spice isn't bad at all. Like, honestly, there's almost no spice at all. Wow, I don't know why people say this isn't that good. This is fairly decent to me. Maybe I don't get good Chinese anywhere I go, but this is, this is very good. Like, I'm very happy about this meal. And like I said, for $23 for this meal, that's not too bad. I mean, that's a big portion of chicken they give you. Like, they give you at least a pound of chicken. It has to be a pound of chicken. I mean, that's, that's massive. And in Epcot, everything, all the prices are inflated as it is. So this is a win for me, I think it is. One thing I did notice, they didn't have a good selection of alcoholic drinks. They had the Sing Sao as the beer, a couple specialty cocktails, no Bai Joe though. Everything just wine is California based, Argentina, New Zealand, Germany. Nothing really Chinese except for that Sing Sao beer. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I was a little shocked by that. Now I'm all done eating at Nine Dragons. I was gonna get some dessert, but then I noticed the dessert is the same exact dessert that they have over at the Lotus Blossom Cafe. They have like the ginger ice cream and I've already had that. So overall, like I said, it is very good food, very delicious food. Like the duck bao buns were amazing. Those were probably my favorite thing. But the thing being said is you're at Epcot's World Showcase. I feel like there is better options. You know what I mean? Even though it's very good food, I wouldn't recommend it as my number one spot I mean there are some great restaurants here the price is pretty decent but 
I mean, you gotta live it up when you're here at Epcot World Showcase. I would wanna go to, you know, Viennapoli or the Cellier or the Beer Garden and stuff like that. I feel like that is a better, better, like uh, food quality and a better experience. So overall food good, but just being here at Epcot World Showcase, it needs to be amazing to actually keep up with some of these other restaurants. So that's why I think it gets its bad vibe. Also, it looks like it super rained while we were there eating and I didn't even see it raining, but it is like dark and gloomy out now. I feel like this is a when did we get ice cream moment because I didn't know it was actually, I didn't know it was raining. It didn't seem like it was raining. Right now, Frozen is down, so I'm happy we got to ride when we did, but Test Track is still down, so that means all the other attractions have to be super busy. When Frozen and Test Track go down at the same time, oh boy, that causes a ruckus. They just made the announcement for Epcot Forever, but then I was like, hey, maybe I'll stick around for that, and I realized that it's actually not even 7.30 yet, so it's still almost two hours away, so I don't know if we're gonna stay, but one thing I'm noticing right here is Ratatouille with the lights on. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm gonna try zooming in here. Do you see the building next to the Morocco Pavilion? It's got the lights on right there. That's Ratatouille. I don't think I've ever seen those lights on back there. That's pretty interesting. Right now, Remy's Ratatouille is doing cast member previews, and I got an annual pass holder preview that is for the 6th. The first day is the 4th, but I wasn't able to get one for the 4th, so I got one for the 6th, not too shabby. I wish I could have got one for the 4th or earlier, but uh, soon it's going to open up anyway, and we get to actually experience it as much as we want. You know, one thing I do love seeing is Spaceship Earth starting to change colors when it's still daylight out and has this like such beautiful glow to it. And you can see it reflecting in the water. Oh, also looks like the rain's coming. Was that lightning? Uh oh, things are escalating super quick. We got a duck down there. That's not a duck, that's a bird. I pulled over for one second to appreciate the beauty of Spaceship Earth and all of a sudden it starts lightning and raining. So we gotta get moving along here. I'm like doing my power walking through World Showcase. I think I'm gonna stop at Earth Eats and get myself one of those apple cinnamon teas. They were so delicious. I think I tried this on opening day and it was so refreshing. And right now I feel very thirsty. Like I am super, super thirsty. And that sounds just delicious. Sounds very refreshing. Right here it is. The Spiced Apple Twinnings of London Chai Tea. And this is so good. I had it before. It's $4.50. Like I said, the cookie over in Norway was actually very cheap because look at like the prices of things at all of the boots. So this is a full cookie you got for $3.95. There's nothing probably under $4 at any food and wine boots. Now you can get this with or without whiskey. I decided to get it without because it is that good on its own. Like you don't need the whiskey actually making it not as good tasting. This actually on its own is just so good, so refreshing, and I've been really wanting to get it since I had it the first time. So here we go, hope it's still as good as I remember. <laughs> it is so sweet. And I don't know if it's just like the apple and the cinnamon. I don't think they put sugar in there, but this is just, it's so delicious. There is one ride that I really would like to try to get done before we go, and that's Finding Nebo, because last time I was here with my mom and sister, we were talking about if we can get one more ride in, and we couldn't get a ride in, and uh, I was telling my mom, I was like, well, we could have always went and done Finding Nemo, and she's like, what's that? And then we realized she's never done it before, so like, if I would have known she's never done it, then I would have done it. Like, we would have went and did it, but we didn't do it, so I, I said next time I was there, I'd ride it, and uh, show it in the video so she can see what it's like and then when they come back down they can ride it and luckily for us it's always like a five minute wait but look at that spaceship berth now looking all beautiful uh oh wait for that monorail shot here it comes i heard it in the background Ooh, a little lightning too beautiful In the big blue world, fish are friends, not food. This is one of the longest queues, I think, at Epcot. You really don't need it. The wait is always just kind of making your way through it. But it's also really refreshing and cool. 
Makes you feel like you're underwater. Look at that. We will close the clam shell for you. There you go, I think we are done here. We got to enjoy living in the seas. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, Finding Nemo. I want to call it living in the seas. I don't know why. It's always going to stick with me like that. But I enjoyed Nine Dragons. It was very good food. We got to ride Frozen. We got to try a beer at some of the new food and wine stands. And then also some very delicious tea. Overall, I call this a very successful day at Epcot. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye. We have to say a proper goodbye to Spaceship Earth on the way out though. Look at that lightning. Isn't she just so beautiful? I think I stopped and paid attention three times today. On the way out, I found a great magic band to add to my collection. Best day ever, Canada Day, and it's actually limited edition to 1,000. That is so cool. I'm definitely getting it.